Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. We, as a matter of fact, we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. So I want for you today, as a symbol that you are glad in it, and if you are not, just be real, to just lift up your hands where you are and bless the Lord. And lift up your hands where you are and give the Lord praise and thanksgiving for the gift of life. Can we take a few minutes and do that? As a matter of fact, can we open our mics and just spend a minute or two to bless the Lord? Can we do that? Can we have a little pra- a time of praise, a minute or two of praise? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless you, we honor you. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Praise Thank, Thank you, God. Because of your awesome. Great is the Lord and great is the praise. Hallelujah. We give you a praise, Lord. So here we are this morning. We are sharing about the kingdom of God, God's kingdom of peace. He is with us this morning. We have the kingdom of peace, God's kingdom of peace reigning in our hearts this morning, and we can bless him. We're going to share a little bit. We're going to continue from what we have been sharing for the last couple of weeks, and we want to say welcome to those who are in our Zoom room. Welcome to those who are on Facebook. Welcome to those who are on YouTube. It's an awesome privilege to be called in these times to teach the Word of God, to preach the Word of God, to most importantly, Um, to manifest by lifestyle the eternal word of God. And this is the call of every son. And um, I I begin with an amazing psalm, Psalm 145, verse 8 and 9. It says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all. All his works. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. We can bless God. If you are if you have the Holy Spirit this morning, you can bless God that you are in a kingdom that is everlasting, a kingdom that will never end of the increase. Of God's government and peace in the kingdom of God, there will be no end. Hebrews 12, verse 28 tells us that wherefore we having received a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let me just say that this morning a lot is happening around the world, and as teenagers, and as even adults, you may you may be questioning. There may be questions that are going through your mind. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? How do I know the will of God? For, for the youth, I've heard them. I've, I've been sitting with them, and, and I'm, I've heard the thoughts, and I've heard and I've heard them verbally say. Will I finish school? Will I go to college? Will I get married? Lord, and and there's so much anxiety. But God comes in the midst of all of this, and he is reminding us that he has a kingdom. Hallelujah. A kingdom that is unshakable. A kingdom that cannot be moved. Hallelujah. When everything around us is moving, God has a kingdom that cannot be moved and that will not be moved. It will not. It cannot be moved. And therefore, this morning, some of you have those questions. And it is my hope that these questions will be answered as we go inside of the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Now guess what? The kingdom of God and the king of the king of God, the king, God's king, Jesus Christ, has estab- came to earth and he died to establish this kingdom. This kingdom is actually found in the Holy Ghost, according to Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat or, and drink. 
but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I tell you, God is saying to us, and, and, and let me reiterate that this year, the Lord has given us a mandate to the, all the affiliate ministries that we need to really teach the kingdom of God and to and to, to herald God as Father. He wants to be known as Father throughout the world. And so we heard him clearly go through the Our Father prayer. It is an experience. It's a prophetic experience. Every line holds a truth, holds solid truth that can ground you, that can develop you. And when we're trying to rush, he said, no, settle down. So we are currently, at, we currently are at thy kingdom come. And when we, we came to thy kingdom come, my Lord, we have looked at righteousness and we have been at peace. And when we are looking at peace and as, a, as an attribute of the kingdom, trust me, it is so dynamic. You may be on this Zoom room, you may be watching this video this morning and you are saying, I want to know about this kind of peace. According to, to John 14, verse 27, Jesus the Prince of Peace steps out and he says, my peace I leave with you. Hallelujah. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give you my peace. I give my peace unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So God comes and he says to us, your son, Jesus Christ, I am going to give you a peace. The peace that and it's not the peace that the world gives. This week in our World Vibe series, we were led to look at the pseudo peace that is that, that the, the, uh, the God's opposer, God's opponent gives. He gives a false sense of security that misguides people for years. Hallelujah. And guess what? But the God through his kingdom is saying, be not caught up in that pseudo peace. The real peace that you need to have is the peace of Jesus Christ that will guard your mind and heart. A peace that passes all understanding. A peace that anchors you for the times. You see, inside of this pseudo peace, we can be just, be just relaxing and about our souls and our souls are in trouble. Do you know that there are people who are alive right now and today is the last day they have on earth? Because it's appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment and they are alive right now. And right now they are making plans, they are watching football, they are, they are doing some things crazy. I mean, I'm not crazy, just doing ordinary things. Um, thinking about maybe how much money is in their bank account, what car they're going to get, who they're going to marry, when they're going to finish school, but today is their appointed time. And they have a pseudo, a false security. They are, they, we are we, the, the world we live in is plagued by, by catastrophe. And, and, and there are times when there are persons who sit back and they say, peace, peace. But we know that in the time of the end, um, according to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 3, guess what? The, the scripture says that in the last days, there will be people who will be crying, peace, peace, when, when sudden destruction will come upon you. And guess what? God does not want us to fear. This is not about fear. Because guess what? He says in the world... You will have tribulations, but in me, says the Lord, you will have peace. Peace knowing, you know how God, God peace, let me just put myself here, you know how God peace anchors me? When you have the Holy Spirit and you live according to the will and purpose of God, you have a peace that you really don't fear death. You trust God's timing for your life. You trust whatever is happening. You understand that he's too good to be unkind and he's too wise to be mistaken. So if he comes for you, you know because you're committed to him, he is, he is preparing you. He would have been preparing you to make that transition. 
The peace of God is so real that the peace of God comes with our Father being in um, installing that peace in your heart. This is not a peace that you can just say you jump up by reading the Bible or going to church or doing religious activity. When you get the Holy Spirit, when you got the Holy Spirit, God installed his peace in you. And he made you a peace and wake up by nature. And when you get plugged into the word of God every day, guess what? That peace flows out of you like a river. We are reiterating some of these things that were even said last week and the week before because we want you to get it. And so for you who have all of those questions, who am I? Where am I going? What is my life about? Guess what? God has an answer for you. He says, this is God's will for everybody who is watching. God the Father is coming again, and he is saying, according to Romans 8, verse 29, his will, his will for the entire human race is that we be conformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. When we are conformed into the image of the son, Jesus Christ, and he lives inside of us. I'm telling you, you will have the peace that we're talking about. We need to magnify this peace. We need to manifest this peace. We need to call people into an experience of the peace of God. You see, Jesus is the king of the universe. He is the prince of peace. And guess what? He wants to, when he conforms you into his image, he wants to take a journey. He wraps your life in his life. What an offer. No wonder the scripture says my life is hid with Christ's life in God. If your life is hid with the life of Christ in God, my Lord, you are saved. And if God, if anything happens to you, God has to allow it. And when he does, excuse me, he always triumphs. It may look negative sometimes when he triumphs, but he's working a greater good. Because remember, that scripture says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed in the image of his son, Romans 8, verse 29. That is God's purpose for every single person who is alive. He wants to conform you into the image of Jesus Christ. No, I want for you to, to, to take, take a look at what I'm saying. Christianity, you'll always hear me say this it's not a behavioral change or a behavioral modi modification program. It's when you offer God your life and he takes it and he gives you his life and he wraps your life with Christ in God and takes you on a journey through time. And guess what? When he takes you on a journey through time, you can have perfect peace all the time. He says, guess what? I got I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on your everlasting father. If you keep your mind stayed on the prince of peace. You know, I'm, 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 I'm experiencing some peace now. It's, it's, it's almost, wow. It, it, because it's Jesus on the inside whose peace you are experiencing and it flows out like a river and you, you know it's his peace because you're going through some things that would cause normally would cause you to just go crazy but guess what in this season of my life I am feeling a, a gentle hand upon me almost like the hand of God upon my life my, uh, the hand of God upon my shoulder he's saying that guess what if I say you can you can find the strength because the strength is me. And so God comes into your life this morning. And let me just say that. God wants to be known as father. But guess what? He lives, we, we live in a system that is opposed to the, the operation of the kingdom of peace. And God wants you this morning to realize that he is not at war with the world he created, the natural world he created. So when we speak of the world, we are not speaking of the, 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 the structures in the world. 
or even some of the things that God put in place, like family. We are speaking of the evil satanic systems that generate evil, right? And therefore, one of the things that we want to get back to as, as, as God-fearing people is to begin to be thankful for God's creation. There's a song that says that, it, that, that, that the stars were made to worship so well high. This generation is so bound by depression and bound by fear and kind of captive by a spirit of war and strife that we don't even look at the natural creation through the eyes of God anymore. Even though the natural creation that God made is, I would say, maybe 90% less than he, he created it, but it still has his fingerprints. It still has beauty. No wonder there are people who live in, in years past people who are now a part of the eternal church in heaven who would say, oh Lord, my God, and I in awesome wonder. Because creation tells a story. Creation tells a story. Earth is really a miniature um, um, heaven. There are lots of things that are in, on earth that are in heaven. God still wants this generation. You are watching. He wants you to start looking at some of the things that he has made the marvelous creation in his, the animals and the birds. And, and he wants you to start giving thanks. Give thanks when you look at the natural creation. That is why I know we are marred. Our, our, our peace is thwarted because we don't have a, a lot of young people um, really stopping to give God thanks for even the natural things to see and appreciate appreciate the, soup, the, the natural things, the supernatural things that God is, has created. But this morning, he comes with a royal invitation. And this is what he's saying to every one of you who are watching. He has your life in his hand. This morning, we are preaching to the young and the young at heart. This is the word of the Lord. God says you have no secular life. When you give your life to me, everything that is done must be done in word and deed must be done to the glory of God. Hallelujah. In fact, when you, when you, when you accept the will of God for your life, you come into his perfect will. You are, where salvation puts you on a path where you are in his perfect will. But as he says, you have to seek him daily for the unfolding of, of, of what he wants you to do. And, and he, that is why he wants you to be tuned to him every day. Hallelujah. To be charged up with his presence. Hallelujah. Guess what? I'll say this. We lead an affiliate uh, movement called Passion and Purity. And this is what the Lord said to me years ago and saying it to everyone who's watching now. We, he, oh Lord, we need to repent because we have sided with the devil to make God and his kingdom spooky. And the devil will always make things of God look like they are unattainable and that they are mystical and that they cannot be enjoyed and that you cannot live a life that you can enjoy and that you're going to have, you're going to miss so much. When you give God your life, he already knows what path he's going to take you on. He's going to put certain talents, certain bent in you. He's going to put his passion in you. He's going to wire you. I'm speaking to students this morning. I wanted to hear the word of the Lord. I'm speaking to adults who may have felt that your life is off on a tangent some more. So, uh, and it's, it's not aligned. Maybe it is not aligned to God's will. But the word of God comes this morning with the kingdom of peace to take your life and align it. When God comes into your life, he would have put certain bends, certain, certain, certain characteristics in you, certain likings in you. He wants to live his life out to you. So do not despise your careers. Hallelujah. Do not despise your careers. Do you know? And by the way, this word comes for you to manifest God today. And some of you are going to get a change of mind this morning. Because do you know that years ago, I was running, 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 running. I mean, I spent so much time preparing to go into full-time ministry because I just felt that God would accept me more. If I was a full-time minister, I would please God more. After all, I would get up and I'd be in the church and I'd do everything that he wants me to do on a given day. 
do you know that the Lord rebuked me? One day there was a teacher taking me to school and I was just talking about the fact that I really want to um, start, go to Bible school and settle down and do the work of the Lord full time. And she looked at me that morning and she said, I don't know anybody that does the work of the Lord full time like you. And the Lord said, when you give your life to me, everything you do becomes an act of worship. Only between two and three percent of people on planet Earth can find reasonable employment in full time ministry. What we call full time ministry, because guess what? Those persons, God called them out. Some of them, He has called them, you call them out from even courses of study. You are aware, and many of us through these affiliates are aware of a young apostle that we that ministered to our hearts so well, Apostle Karen Flowers. God took him out of law school. But this is not for everybody. And people who work full-time ministry um, are just as called into the things of God that the full-time ministry than the, like those of us who give our life to God, and he says. I'm giving you the ministry of reconciliation to which God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You have no secular life, and because of the religion, the spirit of religion and tradition that is on our people, we see we see getting the kingdom and getting the church a Sunday morning or a midweek Bible study or when we are, when we are in the house of the Lord. Do you know that on a Monday morning, the kingdom of God should be manifesting on and, 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 and throughout the earth on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, we are all full-time ministers. We are all given the ministry of reconciliation. And trust me, that teacher, I thank God for her. And I thank God when God spoke and said, Donnie, you are a full-time ministry minister. What if Andrew and I had stepped off? Why? What if we had stepped off the platform of the school that God has us? and gone into what we call full-time ministry. We would not have had the grace to develop passion and purity. We would not have been in place to develop Christian teachers in action. We would not be hearing God and be married because the reason we have an active marriage ministry is that the children that we mentored from high school, we began to marry them, began to counsel them, began to, as marriage counselors and marriage officers, we began to work in their life to raise up another generation that will honor the sanctity of marriage. God said, your mission field was in the classroom. And you are needed to get rid of that wantonness to be full time because the truth is there is a thing, there's a history that was shown that a lot of so called ministers go into what is called chambering. Chambering is when people lay up in their bed all day because guess what? While the a lot of the people that need counseling that come for counseling, sometimes they don't come even in the work hours. Sometimes they fit in the work hours. So guess what? I want somebody on this call this morning to settle yourself. Where you are is your mission field. I was running away from the classroom. God has established what, what is called the seven mountains of ministry. Uh, and, 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 and he wants lawyers in, 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 in the legal system. He wants people working in the health system. He wants people working in, 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 in the political arena. Yes, he wants honest. When the, when the, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. God wants um, Christians to move into these realms and to serve. And so when he puts his passion in you, he's wiring you for his kingdom. Hallelujah. In, in fact, many of you have, have entertained people who want to go on the mission field. The day of the traditional mission-minded people, that day is over where you just go to countries. Only very few people. And 98% of Christians are not paid by the church that work that work on missions. They have to they have to source their founding, foundings. But guess what? A lot of these missionaries that are going now, they are going as career persons. God may have a young man that he gave a passion to fix things when he's young. And that young man is just fixing things and he goes and he does an electrical engineering course but behind that engineering course that man is a pastor he has the heart of a pastor 
And God sends him, God sends him into a situation where guess what? He's on the mission field, but he's a pastor. Hallelujah. God may have, and by the way, there are some that God called specialized ministers, ministers, but he, he, I'm, I'm even finding out now that he had marketplace apostles, apostles with the mind of Christ, apostles, hallelujah, with the mind of Christ who judge a situation. And you know why I want you to, to accept and to accept what God wants from you in your life and to be contented in whatever state you're in? I've been in a class already. Hallelujah. And it's lunchtime. And the Holy Spirit, our steps are ordered by the Lord. And he says, walk across the other campus. Or just walk to the auditorium. And when I walk there, there is a depressed student crying out her heart. A depressed student that sometimes I have seen in my vision the night before. And she's right there. I remember one day I went to, one night I dreamt that there was a girl that was falling from a step. I saw her and I rebuked, I, 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 I prayed for her. And then the next morning in devotion, I saw her in the line. And when I spoke to her, she was limping. She said, the way she fell, it is only God that didn't cause her to break her neck. What I'm saying, be, let your passion, let Christ be manifested where you are. He, it is his gifts that work anywhere you are. And the sons of God need to get rid of this spooky-minded thing. Everybody rushing to be in full-time ministry. And who pays you? God is saying, where are my doctors? Where are my lawyers? Hallelujah. One day God said, walk. And when I walked, I went in the auditorium and I saw a girl sitting down. And I said, what happened to you? She said, as a matter of fact, it was the same girl I saw in a vision the night before. She was tied with a belt. Yes, only 2% of Christians are paid by the church. Thank you for that comment. That girl was wrapped up. She was in a, she was a, there were many belts that tied her. And I went to the auditorium and put my hand on her and began to, to, to speak to her because I saw her in, in a vision the night before. What had happened to this young lady? She was in a shop and there was, a, and this was years ago. She, a gunman had come in and killed the shopkeeper and told her, you better not speak. And so she walked around in fear every day, fear gripping her. She was twisted by fear. But that day, the Holy Spirit took control over that spirit of fear and broke it, broke the bonds of that, ch that child. We have seen children, God, break the bonds when the word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Guess what? You are in the profession that you are in by the design of the Holy Spirit. And it is time for the sons of God to be sons of God in the marketplace. God is about building character. And in, co in, in, in the COVID, right, God has really now shown me why he wanted me in education. I am touching so many students now. I am in ISAF meetings, I'm in devotions, I'm in different programs. I am transported into auditoriums with, or online auditoriums when they were online, when they gathered and transported so many places. In other words, the word of God is not bound. Some of you, God has put it in your heart to do devotion for your workplaces and you have you to just let the word of God dwell richly in you, but you have been bound. And this morning, I, I'm going to share with you five oppositions. Quickly, what are five oppositions that keep the sons of God from manifesting his kingdom? And some of you, you are going to manifest his kingdom today. Hallelujah. One, you give over to the opposition, the spirit of fear that comes, the fear that you will die. Guess what? When you get the life of Christ working, you don't fear death because you know to die is gain. You are ready. When you are ready to meet God, you don't fear death. So you have a peace. If God calls me today, trust me, I am ready to meet him. Hallelujah. I am ready to meet him. So I have peace. Some of you, the opposition is just blatant sin. You are in sin. You need to get out of that. Now the word is coming. The anointing is coming by the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to walk out of that. And equally, your relationship 
Hallelujah. You are you have you have fornicated, you are you are in adultery. Step out right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loose you. You will never manifest the kingdom. You will never have peace in that relationship. As a matter of fact, that relationship is designed to carry you down a path of destruction. The Bible says there's no temptation given you that is give that, that is not common to man. But guess what? Jesus has made a way of escape this morning. Walk out of that relationship in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you're, 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 you are ignorant of the will of God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you have been running from careers. Do you know that I ran away from my career? I went to UTEC and I did institutional management. Because even though as a child, can you imagine as a child, it was just this natural bent. I just knew I needed to be a teacher. I would gather my dolls and teach them. And guess what? When I was older, I looked for all the illiterate people in the church and started a school for them under the bottom of our house, a nice underground cellar. And some of those people, that's their ministers of the gospel today because they, they were taught to read and they were had to read the scriptures. I'm, I know two or three of them who are ministers today. I was a teacher, but I didn't want to teach. So I went, can you imagine? I went and did institutional management and I went to work and I had all hell there because I was a young supervisor. And when I walked in that place, I had to supervise 46 people and most of them were men and those those older men, they gave me hell, right? Not that you can't experience the peace of God. Even the religious ones that when you give them work, they are fasting today or they would try you because what is this young lady telling me to do? But guess what? After a while of crying out to God, I went to my bed one night and I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw myself in a school and the principal said, after interviewing me, you are the kind of teacher I've always expected, I've always wanted you to be. And can you imagine, I woke up the next morning and somebody called and sent me to a school and I walked to the school and when I walked into the school, it was the same school. And that principal looked at me after the interview and said, Miss Williams, this is, you are the perfect teacher we have been waiting for. Hallelujah. I found my passion. The Holy Spirit wants to sanctify your passion. We are getting ready to hit the universities to call students out to the life of self-denial, even inside of your career. And, 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 and we cannot minister the message of Jesus Christ to a point that tells you that God, that God, God doesn't want you to, 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 to pursue that which he puts in your heart. If it's him and he puts it in your heart, you will have peace. We want a generation of workers who work with so much excellence that the kingdom of God comes in. Some of you watching this tape, you need to go back to your work tomorrow morning and ask your supervisor to forgive you because you have not manifested the kingdom in works. You have done chaka chaka. You have you have cheated on the job. You have not manifested excellence. You have walked inside of a grudge. God is saying that, guess what? I want you to humble yourself. Humble yourself. And some of you are in the wrong careers. But guess what? The kingdom of God, when you seek God, he will align you. He forgave me for running away from the very thing, the very thing that would be the vehicle that would transport us here today. And so when God said in October, raise up the eternal church unto me and, and let it be and and, 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 and a place where you disciple a small core, but a place where anybody from the body of Christ can access, accept, access, and any any true prophetic and prophet and, and apostolic voices across the globe can be discovered and heard. We said, yes, Lord, but he had already gone ahead and given us 12 years of experience of working in something through the very profession that I despise. What else? Fear. Fear of the future. Fear of the future. Fear of dying. God wants you to manifest his peace now. Peace at home. Another thing that can block you is anxiety. Some of you, your anxiety is breeding an atmosphere of war at home. I want you to stop right now and examine the climate of your house. Are you an instrument of God's peace at home? 
Because any ministry that you have will start at home. Hallelujah. What if, what if the sons of God manifest the kingdom of peace at home and then took that peace out in the marketplace where their passions are alive? Hallelujah. Alive unto God. God wants your life to have eternal value and significance in time and eternity. Well, this brings me to an important how. How do you find the peace of God? I've been giving you nuggets, but well, let me just say that. You will have to lay down your life. You will have to be prepared to die to your dreams that you have. But some of those dreams that you have are not God. Some of those aspirations that you have are not God. The scripture says you will be led forward with peace. Peace will be the empire. Peace with God. Not necessarily peace in your, with, with, with situations around you all the time. But you will have peace. Peace with God. Knowing that you, you will feel as though you are being guided. And many times you will be guided along a path that you really don't even want to go. But when you are committed to God and you say, yes, Lord, thy will be done. Because that school that I was led to was in the heart of the inner city. I'm telling you, you'd be in classrooms and a, a, a rock stone just steal across your head. Or some boy just climb up through the window and tell you the nastiest bad words. Or even mess in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to school and clean up that mess. But there I found some rare gold, some students. Hallelujah, they were poor and some of them were not educated. But it was my most precious teaching experience. I found the love of God. So even though we would cite the stone, right? And the principal would have to call the police, or even though those boys would be, but the love of God, they, there was no anger in me when they stood by the window. As a matter of fact, hallelujah, when you have the kingdom of peace, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The peace of God would disarm them. Hallelujah. I am telling you, and the peace of God will pass all understanding. It guards, it keeps your mind through Jesus Christ. What and, and, and guess what? As we as we kind of prepare to wrap up this morning, let me say that God wants all of you. As I said, when you live your life to the glory of God, everything you do becomes an act of worship. As a, a, hallelujah, it's not just when you come to church, everything. Everything has eternal value and significance. No wonder Colossians 3 verse 17 says, whatever you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father mm -hmm. by him. Whatever you do, you do it well. Do it well and to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, by the way, I am a historian. I read a lot. I just, I've discovered people in every career Hallelujah. When Jesus steps in your body and he is the police on the scene, he is the lawyer in the courtroom, he is the doctor on the ward. Hallelujah. He is the mechanic. I've encountered the peace of God through certain professions. And I, I'm thinking now of a story I read of uh, one of the well, most well-known well criminal in the United States. They were hunting him for it. I watched this true to life story that really um, empowered me to, to start Passion and Purity. And there was a Christian cop who, who saw him and they disarmed him. The peace of God just flew out and disarmed him. And he could take the man in, but conducted so many prayer meetings with that man until the man's family got saved. And that man became a minister. Do not despise. Who on your job are you despising? Who in your classroom are you despising right now? Can you imagine? And this is what Passion and is called to raise up to do, to raise up a generation of people who are holy, who are pure, 
who are who are part of the priesthood that is the, the eternal priesthood who are separate from sinners who are holy. We are not going to give you any any word that keeps you tied to this world. As a matter of fact, the, when I say this world, the world systems. Let's define the world systems today. The world systems God is against. God is not against the things that He created for you, using them for His glory. We are going to continue to give you excerpts on the eternal church of people who stepped in time because this is a part of the hidden history of the church. When you had professors like Faraday who had a revelation of light and would gather university students and teach Jesus as the light of the world and watch hundreds of them convert to Jesus Christ. As we hit your campuses, we are coming on your campuses to say that the Prince of the Peace of Peace is Jesus Christ. He wants to come into your heart. And by the way, excuse me, God doesn't promise us everything that everything will be work with Hunky Dory. He says in the world you'll have tribulation. As a matter of fact, you will have peace even if you are not rich. Because there are some Christians who will not leave the ghetto. It is God's determination, according to 1 Timothy 6 and verse 6, that with godliness, we, we work inside of contentment. But some of you, I heard somebody said, I don't want to give my life to God. I'm afraid I will not marry. I'm afraid he will take away my, my privileges. Guess what? He never takes away anything that you need to fulfill your purpose. And if he takes it, it's for a time. And he will give you back in a time when you really, really need it. Hallelujah. We have given up houses. We have given up cars. We have given up a lot that we, didn't, we don't even talk about. And guess what? God gave it back in time, in a better way. I remember we had, we, we had money for, for the down payment of our house, significant. And God said, give it to the gospel. Because we were walking up and down, going to more, looking everywhere for a house. And then years later, when the community that we were supposed to really live, I said, God, why? He said, you couldn't have lived where you live now because that community was not even de developed yet. It is my will for you to live where you are now. You didn't need it. As a matter of fact, he had said, help a single mother. She has no place to lay her head. And do you know that years later, donkey years later, when we were getting this house, she came back and she said, I remember when you helped me. I'm going to help you. Cast your bread upon the water. You will find it after many days. There are many of you that God is talking to. We don't talk about the price, but you look at us. We have paid some serious price to walk in this anointing, to be able to lead the eternal church in this generation. A church that is going to be without walls, a church that stands within the bounds of faith, a church that calls for uncompromised holiness, a church that will be steadfast to the apostles' doctrine, a church that will operate in the prophetic, the gifts of the spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, a church that will call people out of sin. I'm saying to you this morning that even though God installed his peace in you at salvation, but we are charged to pursue that peace every day by momentarily yielding or giving way to the Holy Spirit in us. Someone this morning, I hear the Holy Spirit say, give way, give way, give way. This requires you walking in the mind of Christ that was installed in you at salvation. We were reminded last week forcefully through many different means that God says, and I want you to listen to me, to be carnally minded is death. Death is lurking after someone this morning who is carnally minded. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Give way. Hallelujah. Give way. The carnal mind has held you captive this morning. Give way. I hear the Holy Spirit say give way. I see someone breaking on Zoom right now. Guess what? Hallelujah. You are breaking because you think that you have wasted time in the wrong profession or in the wrong relationship. God says this morning, I want to make all things new. 
I want to cry. I want to redeem the time for you. When I step into your world and I take away the mess that you give me this morning, I won't remember it. Right now, where you are, I want you to confess your sins before the Lord. He says he will move it as far as the east is from the west. It won't be on your books. Hallelujah. So far will he remove your transgression. And if you're in the Holy Ghost and you did some things before you got saved, God says, I don't know that person you didn't exist that time that person doesn't exist anymore i made you a new person in christ hallelujah i am i'm rebuking that false doctrine of generation curse this morning guess what god says when you're born away again i make all things new hallelujah if their propensities of your generation is because you choose to pick them up but guess what the, 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 the andrea you were before salvation god doesn't know that andrea that andrea died in Christ. Hallelujah. That Andrea died, that Andrea died, and there's a new Andrea in Christ. The freedom and the liberty that we come this morning, we come to declare liberty in the cap to the captives. We're going a little bit extended this time, but guess what God says today? If you hear his heart, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. The kingdom of peace comes to you today. Hallelujah. I want you to open your heart and begin to cry out to the name of Jesus. Those who you are carnally minded, walk it can't to be carnally minded means you walk after your five senses. You're ruled by what's happening in the world. To be spiritually minded means you walk by hallelujah, that which God is saying to you in your heart, and you will you walk by the Holy Spirit. So, right now, in the name of Jesus, I need to see your uh, repentance in the chat. You can type. Type the type what's happening to you in the chat. I'm surrendering my life to God. I'm repenting. Hallelujah. This is the way we communicate in the cyberspace reality. You are repenting. You are resubmitting your life to God. You are thanking Him that you are now seeing clearly that you are in His will. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Yes. We see those comments. We need you to talk to us. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying for you now. Hallelujah. God says, whatever situation that you're in this morning, I want you to pursue peace. Yes, there are three persons surrendering afresh in this moment. Hallelujah. We want you to surrender afresh. There's somebody on the line. You are a backslider. You're ignorant and out of the way. You know what? Because I said you don't see the dangers that are in that false peace treaty that you have made with the devil and some people. Hallelujah. But this morning, lay down, lay down your plans. Pick up God's plans. I want everybody to be saying this morning, God, from a pure heart, God, it is your way. I'm going by the way of peace. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, right now, Father. We pray for someone who is, who is who's on their knees crying out to you, no Lord, fill them up with your Holy Spirit. Well, hallelujah, right now, on the eternal church, right now, the kingdom of God has come. And that because the kingdom of God has touched down, there is righteousness, which brings peace, and there is peace which will be multiplied in joy this morning. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. We pray, oh God, for those who are mentally challenged. Hallelujah. Those this morning in, on, on this call who, who are in depression, we speak the peace of God this morning in the name of Jesus. Somebody type peace. Peace. Just type peace. Just type peace. The blood of Jesus whispers peace this morning to everyone on this call. We want to thank you this morning for visiting with us. And as you cry peace, know that it's the blood of Jesus that is crying peace in your individual situations. Hallelujah. 